When it comes to texturing, we're frequently finding a single image and then applying multiple layers or multiple other images to that single image. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys some quick tips just on how to quickly add or open these additional layers together. That way it doesn't become so cumbersome inside of Photoshop. Now, the typical way that you would open these files is you'd open them one at a time. Now, if you're in Lightroom, you'd select the image. So let's go ahead and select this little image of the Zion entrance from the exercise files. I'm going to hit Control E or Command E on a, uh, on a Mac, and it's going to open it up right inside of Photoshop. Now, the problem is if I go back to Lightroom, if I go back to Bridge and I say, okay, now I want to use this texture and I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to hit Control E again, and this is going to open it up. And I'm going to say just, uh, well, let's edit a copy. Actually, I don't really want to edit a copy. Let's just take the original. Okay, so we're going to take the original and it opens up in a separate file now. Now with that, I'm going to have to basically go and hit Control A, copy this, Control W or Command W to close it, and then Control V to paste this over my current image. And this is very cumbersome, especially if you're adding a lot of different textures to a single image. So rather than doing that, there's a couple quick workarounds. Let's go ahead and show you inside of Lightroom. And this technique, it kind of gets a little bit convoluted if you have a ton of different folders over here. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to select multiple images at once. So let me go ahead and uh, go back to Photoshop. I'm going to hit Control W or Command W just to close this file out and I'm not going to save it. Let's take this file and let's say that I want to combine this. I want to get a, a base paper in here. So let me get like this base paper and I also want maybe uh, this paper and maybe a couple others. I don't know. Maybe we'll grab an effect as well. I want to create my own little hodgepodge of, uh, I like that word, hodgepodge. All right, my own little hodgepodge of effects. Okay, let's grab these five. So we have five images selected along with the key layer. So what I'm going to do now is with these five selected, all I did was I held control or command down while I'm selecting those different items to add them to that selection group. We're going to right click now and we're going to go to edit in and you're going to say open as layers inside of Photoshop. Now Lightroom is going to do all the work for you and it's going to basically take those and it'll batch load them into one single file inside of uh, Photoshop. That way we don't have to go and do all this whole command and control and copying and pasting and all that stuff. It just automatically does it for us. Once we're inside, we would just add our, uh, we'd move our image to the actual bottom layer, which if you select the image last and then you right click and say edit in, then it will be the bottom layer. But if you don't, then it might be like somewhere in the middle, you just drag and drop it into the bottom. Okay, so that's a quick way from Lightroom to get either multiple textures opened up at the same time or textures plus images open at the same time, all as different layers inside of Photoshop. Now let's show you how to do the same thing inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and control W this uh, command W just to close this out. And what we're going to do is go to file and then scripts. And then we're going to go to load files into stack. Now from here, basically, what we're going to do is browse and find these files on our uh, desktop or wherever we have them. I'm going to load this same image, this uh, exercise file image right there. And let's go ahead and add additional ones. So I'm going to go back to the actual paper textures. This is not a very useful way if you're doing this a lot just because it can become quite cumbersome. But I do want to show you guys how to do it. So similarly, we'd select all of our textures from here and I'm going to select a couple from the foundation ones. I'm going to say open. I'm going to select a couple, maybe one from the uh, effects one as well and then say open. The problem is here we can't really see it all that close. We can increase the size of these thumbnails and make them extra large, but even then it's not that visual. All right, let's click open. And once we have those all loaded into the stack, we can hit OK. And now it's going to automatically load each of these images into the stack, just how it would have inside of Lightroom when we selected multiple images and then had it load them into layers. Once again, once we're inside, we're just going to drag the image layer down to the bottom and then we begin blending. Now I'll show you one more version of this or one more iteration. And we're going to show this from Bridge. If you don't have Lightroom, this is typically what I would use. And even if you do have Lightroom, I still like to use Bridge a lot of times. Let's go ahead and just close this out. I'm not going to save it at all. Okay, so what I might do is I might edit my image from, say, Lightroom, but I don't have to. Maybe I want to edit from Photoshop. What I'm going to do from Bridge is I'm going to open up one of these files, one of the exercise files into uh, Photoshop. Since we've been working on this, texture exercise file right here, uh, the Zion entrance one. Let's just use that one. So let's right click. And what I generally like to do is say open with camera raw. That way it takes me to camera raw first. And then I can make my modifications to it. I can do whatever I want with the contrast, whatever I want with anything. Now it really doesn't matter what you end up dialing in here, just dial in something. Now what I like to do from here is by holding down shift, I get the open object dialog button instead of just open image. Okay, so if I hit shift and click open object, this opens it as a smart object instead of just a standard layer inside of Photoshop. Now as a smart object, the beautiful thing about this is that at any point in time, I can double click on this and it'll bring up camera raw and I can make adjustments directly from this little camera raw dialog right to that original raw file. If we open up just as a layer, it's not going 
to operate that way. And so that's why typically I do like to open it as an object until I have everything set. And then if I need to, I can rasterize it at that point. But at any point in time, this is non-destructive. And so whatever change we make here, we can go back, we can modify and so forth via the camera dialog. If you don't have that option, then with a standard layer, let's go ahead and uh, jump this to a new layer. So I'm going to hit Control J, and we're going to rasterize the second version of this, okay? If we double click on this now, it's not going to do anything except for bring up the layer style dialog box. If we want to get back to camera raw dialog, what we have to use is in Photoshop CC, we now have the option of a camera raw filter. I don't think CS6 has this. I might be wrong, but in CC, we do have it. And this will give you a filter that's going to basically give you camera raw. But again, it's not really raw. You're adjusting a JPEG version of the image, whereas with the smart object, we can adjust the actual raw file. Okay, so that's how we would open the actual raw. Now let's go ahead and go back to bridge. And uh, the thing is that I'm going to go back to our paper textures here, and we have them organized in these different folders, okay? So foundation, grunge, burned, just to make it easy to find what you want to find. Now we can do the same thing with these textures, but these are JPEG files. So what I can do is I can say open as a camera raw or open in camera raw. And what this will do is bring up a camera raw dialog. Now if I make a single modification from here, notice that if I hit done, it's going to add a little camera raw icon up there that this image has been modified inside of camera raw. Now I want to show you something. If I click on any of these images and drag this over to uh, Photoshop, it's going to add the image as a layer into this file right here. But if I go over any image that has this little camera raw uh, adjustments has been made basically icon right there. <laughs> you like that name? Camera raw adjustments has been made icon. All right, if I select this image and I go back to Photoshop, when I let go and drag and drop, it brings up camera raw. Now the beautiful thing about this is it'll work just like a raw file. So if I click on that, I can enter it and, uh, and drop it into my, my little working space. And then anytime I double click this, it brings up camera raw. So it's wonderful because we can make adjustments to our textures right on the fly as well. Again, if you don't do this, you're limited because if I double click on this one, which didn't have that uh, camera settings adjustment made prior, then it takes me just simply to this little, uh, well, just a, a new file with that open. Okay. So that's kind of the difference in how to open these objects from bridge. So oftentimes what I like to do is just open all of my objects as smart, uh, sorry, as smart objects or as, as camera raw files from bridge. That way I have complete control over them. And then once I get them all opened, uh, you know what, what I could do just to make this very easy. Okay, let's go ahead and open in camera raw. And what we can do is make a tiny, tiny adjustment here, like say 0 0.01 to exposure. Okay, just hit done. And we can synchronize that setting across all the other images. And I can do that by simply hitting Control A or Command A, then right clicking and saying, go to develop settings and go previous conversion. Now with that previous conversion, it makes that tiny 0.01 adjustment to everything. And now all of my textures now, oops, I keep hitting Control D. I wanted to deselect all, actually, let's just hit deselect all. Okay, now with each of these textures, they all have the smart object icon, the little camera icon, and any of these that I drag and drop into uh, my Photoshop uh, document are going to automatically bring up the camera dialog when I bring them in. Okay, so it's a quick way to make sure that all the JPEGs open as camera raws from bridge. Now, unfortunately, from bridge, if we flip back here, we don't have the option of being able to select multiple and having it right click and load into layers as we would inside of Lightroom. So Lightroom is really the best way to combine multiple layers very quickly or to combine multiple images quickly into a single Photoshop file if you do indeed have it. All right, so that's it as far as opening up these files. When I'm working with a bridge, I like to work with these little camera icons so I automatically get camera opened up. I like to combine all of my layers inside of Lightroom so that way I can select all my images, right click, add to layers. And if nothing else, if I don't have anything, I can always use the batch process, that automate uh, script process right here, which was the script to load all into a stack. Okay, so those are the ways that I kind of like to open and work with these texture files. We're done with this video. Let's head on now to the next one.